Well, hello, everybody. My name is Dre. I'm a customer success engineer here with MoveWorks. Um, I'll be our host today for today's Creator Studio weekly webinar uh, episode. So let's go ahead and talk uh, a little bit about some of the upcoming sessions. Um, I'll give a little bit of an intro to uh, the, what we'll be talking about today as well, and then we'll jump into things. Uh, today, we'll be discussing Workday PTO request approvals. Uh, next week on the 7th, we'll be discussing Workday benefits lookups. So this is going to be querying for your benefits as an end user. And then on the 14th, we'll discuss Workday training due notifications. Um, this will be sort of a proactive notification um, type use case. So those will be uh, really good uh, sessions, I think. So please you know, feel free to join us if, if any of these interest you. Um, but today, let's go ahead and jump into uh, our current topic. And let me just give a layout sort of how we'll handle this session. So uh, we'll spend some time talking about the use case and how we generally recommend approaching things when it comes to building PTO request approvals. And then we'll have a Q&A session at the end. So what I would ask is that any questions that you have uh, during the sort of content portion of the call, uh, go ahead and write them down, uh, add them to the chat um, or, or, or something so that we can get to them during the Q&A session and have a truly uh, you know, in-depth conversation about, about each of your questions. So with that, uh, let's dive into the specifics of today's topic, uh, Workday PTO request approvals. So I always like to start with uh, a little bit of background as to why this is even worth pursuing. Um, I think it's fairly straightforward. You know, if you have employees who are submitting PTO requests, oftentimes they need to have a manager approval or some kind of approval um, from, from some other user. And by configuring a Workday PTO request use case in Creator Studio, you can deliver those approval notifications to the approver. Um, this saves time by just getting that to them. They don't have to actually log into Workday and navigate to their time off calendar or approvals. Um, they can approve directly in chat and uh, in the end sort of get this whole process done end to end using uh, purely just chat. So uh, there is a Workday PTO request um, use case that sort of can go along with this. I'll point it out in our use case guide at the end. Um, but this is specifically on the approval side of things. Once the approval or once the request is submitted, how do we get the approval to the approver and how does the approver then take action on that approval? So let's look at the uh, general user experience we want to build. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our next slide here. And this is sort of an example. So we don't have to build exactly this, but I think this does a pretty good job of showing the kind of experience we want to curate. So in this case, uh, Gwen is our approver. So Gwen is going to get a proactive notification from MoveWorks uh, that is going to say something along the lines of, you know, this user Jane Doe has submitted a new PTO request and then we want to provide some details about the PTO request. Um, now, of course, the details that are going to be configured are going to be probably specific to your workflow. So I've left things fairly uh, vague, <laughs> if, if you will. So here in this uh, specific sort of experience that we have here, uh, you'll have a start date, an end date, maybe a description, um, about the uh, request. Um, some other things you might want to include maybe are the kind of time off, maybe the time off plan um, or the time off type, depending on which is more relevant. Uh, you also may want to include details such as, uh, you know, maybe every day that they're taking off instead of just the range, because maybe they have, you know, some days that they're they're not taking off in the middle or or, or something along those lines. So there's, there's a lot of flexibility there. We then want to offer Gwen the option to either approve, reject, um, or I like to have an option to ignore. Uh, I think that makes it very clear that they don't have to do anything. You know, you don't have to have an ignore button. Um, they could just simply ignore the notification. Um, but having an approve and reject and an explicit ignore button kind of makes things a little bit clearer, I think, for the end user. Then Gwen needs to be able to approve. And then finally, we need to give back a response that the request has been approved once it has been approved. Uh, same for reject. And for an ignore message, I think we should give something along the lines of, okay, we'll reach back out in another week, something like that. Whatever that time interval is, we want to let them know. So uh, how do we build this? So let's go ahead and look at a high-level diagram. And this high-level di level diagram is going to kind of show all of the different parts, the general data flow. Um, and just sort of, you know, what, what we need to actually build. So uh, the way that this is going to start is with um, an iPass tool. We're going to recommend an iPass tool whenever you're building Workday use cases in general. Now, that's really um, 
not a hard requirement per se. Uh, you there there are, is a version of this use case you could build using purely just MoveWorks and Workday, um, but an iPass tool gives you a lot more flexibility as far as configuration goes. So I think for you know for for our conversation today, um, building this with an iPass tool uh, is going to give us some some additional options that we can kind of talk about. So if I'm using an iPass tool. I likely want to build a polar. And so what I mean by a polar is, let's say every day, uh, maybe 8 a.m. Uh, in the morning, we want the iPass tool to reach out to Workday and check for any uh, open uh, approvals. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to pull for uh, the business process event steps that are related to an approval. So the step type should be approval. And the business process would be related to PTO. So whatever that is for you guys, that'll probably be custom. You're going to get back then a list of approvals that need to be actioned. For each of those approvals, you'll need to send an event notification. So generally speaking, when we're talking about proactive notifications from the bot, we're talking about an event use case in some form. Today, specifically, we're discussing an event triggered path or an event use case with a follow-up action, sort of two different ways describing the same thing. So what I mean by that is when the puller then finds a new approval that needs to take place, it's going to call an event that in MoveWorks Events Studio has been configured to have a follow-up action, which is going to result in a path. So again, what's going to happen is the user is going to get the notification that they have a new PTO approval uh, request. They are going to, in that notification, see the details that are on the approval that they need to see in order to action the approval. And then finally, the event triggered path will then come up. That's where you get the options. The options there are going to be, would you like to approve or reject? Something along that line with the options being approve, reject, and ignore. So that would be step four, is you're gonna hand that off and, and get the uh, user's input. Once you have the approver's input, the approve button, the reject button, those need to call either the Workday API directly and make uh, an update. I'll show you the API that I would recommend using for that. Or uh, again, calling an iPass solution. Um, for the same reasons as before, if you have maybe more complicated business processes that require more data, or there's an additional query that needs to be made, or maybe you just want to have a more dynamic user experience, you could pass it to an iPass tool, do whatever processes you need to do there, and then finally make that work day call. So uh, again, a couple of different ways to do it. This is going to be generally the way I'm going to recommend building this use case. So Let's go ahead and let's just see what this looks like before we talk about how you would build this. I think I'm going to do this a little bit backwards uh, than normal just because there's so much more involved in this. So let's go ahead and click on our demo. And uh, what you'll notice is I'm triggering basically an approval notification to be fired. Um, you know, For the sake of our demo, I don't want this to be triggered based on time only. So we're going to go ahead and go to the bot. Uh, this is my demo bot here, it's M8. And you can see the notification that's come through. It's going to say, hi, Dre, Logan McNeil has submitted a new PTO request. In this case, I have it configured to show the description, the ID of the approval, the due date of the approval, and that's really it. So then it's going to ask, how would you like to respond to this PTO request? The options are accept, decline, or ignore. So I'll go ahead and click ignore just to sort of show you what that looks like. Um, that doesn't mean we can't go back and then just click accept again here in a moment. So right away, it's going to say, I'll remind you about this approval in a week if no further action is taken, thus kind of ending the conversation. And uh, if 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 a ticket puller was built or a, a, an approval puller was built, it will pick this approval up again tomorrow or next week, whatever time frame we're looking at. If I instead click accept, it's going to then call, in this case, a Ricotto recipe, which is going to actually submit the accept. So it says, please confirm that you would like to accept. It's going to double check. We'll click yes, and it's going to go ahead and make that call. Uh, the Ricotta recipe is actually what returns a 200 HTTP status code, and that's how the bot knows that it was successful. So it's going to say your approval has been successfully submitted. And that's really the use case. That's kind of the end to end. So you can see that the user experience here is very simple, um, and that's kind of what we're going for. We want the complexity to be hidden behind uh, the automation that we're building. So then uh, briefly, let's go ahead and look at the first thing that I wanted to share, which is the Workday PTO request polar. 
Now I've built this in Workado, and the reason being that I just think it's easy to kind of see and follow along. It's easy for me to show sort of how this looks, but you, you can build this using even something like a Python script, um, maybe an Azure function or uh, in Power Automate. I mean, there's there's a number of different tools. Boomi um, would be able to uh, do this, Zapier. So um, just know that you can apply this general logic to the to the automation you're building. So the first trigger, uh, in my case, is an HTTP webhook, but I'm going to recommend that you configure this trigger to be, again, some kind of polar, maybe every hour, every day, or every week. You're checking to see if there's approval notifications that or approvals that need to be approved, to need to be actioned. Then we're going to call Workday. Uh, Workout is actually kind of nice here because we have an out-of-the-box Workday connector. So we simply set it up, and then we're going to make an API call to the business process API, and specifically the endpoint for event steps. This is going to return a list of different business process steps, uh, kind of as you know we referenced in our uh, diagram earlier. And then we need to filter out these business process steps uh, to specifically find those which are related to, in this case, business process. This is an ID relates to, uh, uh, to time off requests. Again, this is going to be specific to your environment, so don't worry too much about the actual string here. And then the step type here is approval. So again, this ID will be specific to your environment, but just know that this corresponds to the approval step type. Then for each approval step type, uh, object that comes back, we then need to make a call. So this is an additional field that I've added here just for our demo so we can filter it down to just one notification. Um, you would not have this in your logic. So it would go for each uh, approval that needs to be approved, send a message to the approver using the MoveWorks events API. So I think that's 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 fairly straightforward. This is really all I wanted to show here was just, again, you're going to pull for approvals for each item, send it to the uh, approver. Then uh, what that's going to do is, in, again, trigger our event triggered path. So we're going to go ahead and look at our event. In this case, I've created an event called Workday Webinar PTO Approval Request. Um, I'm keeping this open-ended because we don't know if the user is going to approve or deny. You'll get an event ID. That's fine. Um, I do want to leave the show greeting message here because it just saves me time. If the bot's going to start the message by saying hi and then the approver's name, that's great. I don't have to do any additional configurations in my work uh, Ricotta recipe in my iPass tool. Um, you could disable this, and then you would just get the notification that is sent from your uh, event API call. But I do want to add a follow-up action, so I have to send yes. And this is where the meat of this comes in. This is actually going to allow us to build a follow-up path. So let's look at what that looks like. So in our follow-up path, we're going to start with a question. How would you like to respond to this PTO request? And then we just need to provide the options, accept, decline, or ignore. Um, I kind of explained why we would want to have an ignore option here. Um, I think hopefully the accept and decline are fairly straightforward uh, and understandable. So uh, that's really all that is there is uh, to this question. So we'll go ahead and click save or discard because I've already saved it, but we'll save it for now. Then we need to configure options for accept, decline, and ignore. Ignore is probably the most straightforward. If we look at that, I'm just writing a text response to the user. I'll remind you about this approval in a week if no further action is taken. Again, this time frame, a week is hypothetical. So set this to whatever the actual polar in your use case uh, automation is configured to. Go ahead and click save. And then for accept and decline, again, I'm actually calling an iPass automation again. So let's go ahead and look at what I'm doing there. Um, so specifically, what I'm going to pass is uh, basically anything I need to trigger the automation in the iPass tool. And then I'm going to pass in the request body the approval ID, which would be a variable like this. And I'm going to pass uh, whether the approval uh, is approved or denied. So in this case, it's a Boolean string. It just says approval true for the approved uh, portion of this workflow. Now, approval ID goes here. What do I mean by this? When you trigger the event API in your iPass tool, you actually should also deliver the Workday ID of the approval. You're going to do that as a slot. And I uh, will share some documentation at the end. We can also discuss it on how you would actually configure a slot. But just think of a slot as a variable that is allowed to be passed in your event API notification that you can then leverage during a follow-up action like this. So your, uh, you know, the general format is going to be something like this, approval ID. Uh, in this case, just to make things a little bit easier to read, I've gone ahead and left it as just this approval ID goes here, you know, value. 
again, for the, the, the decline uh, version of this, this use case, if you go ahead and look at the request body, I mean, everything else is exactly the same. Um, it's just that approval again is set to false. And that's just going to be something that our uh, IPASS tool is able to interpret as whether or not to pass the approve API caller or the deny API call. Uh, once you've done that, of course, launch to uh, yourself or to, to whomever needs access to this use case. You can launch to all users, um, whichever is most relevant to your stage of development. So then the last thing I wanted to share, we're running uh, a little bit out of time as far as content goes. So I just wanted to share this very quickly. Uh, this is the API that you can use um, to actually approve or deny that business process step. Um, you're going to use the business process API and the event steps endpoint. So it's a post, business process, event steps. The ID here is the workday ID of the uh, step that you get back in your API call when you're polling for approval. So that's why it's important to pass that as a slot in your use case um, via your event API call. And then uh, here we have approve. So this is uh, the API you would use. Uh, again, if you just look up the uh, community.workday.com uh, website, you can see their REST services directory and know that it's the business process API and specifically the event steps endpoint. You'll also notice that there's a deny option here. This is the counterpart that you would use for, of course, denying that approval step. And with that, that is everything you should need to know to build this use case. So let's go ahead and go back to the slides. Um, I want to share a few resources that you can use to learn more, um, especially things that cover the gaps sort of that uh, I don't have enough time to cover during this call. Um, but 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 I've I've sort of made sure to only cover the or not cover the things that we have documented elsewhere. So let's go ahead and look at what those sources are. So the first resource be our Creator Studio uh, developer certification course. You can find this on our academy, and it's going to give you sort of the step-by-step -step process to becoming um, very skilled at using Creator Studio. Now, Creator Studio is a fairly uh, easy, you know, uh, platform to get to, to get to get onto, and this this course I think is a big reason why. So you'll you'll find guided training modules. Um, and you can get a step-by-step, uh, -step, uh, or sorry, a certification at the end of the course that you can use on LinkedIn to just show that you are knowledgeable about the platform. So I think that's pretty cool. And then finally, are our documentation and developer community. So on our documentation portal, this is going to have lots of tutorials and use case guides. That's the really big thing I wanted to call out. We actually have an authentication guide in our tutorials and guides section for Workday. And so if you want to build this use case, I would recommend starting at the tutorials and guides section and look for the Workday use case guide. That's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions for actually setting up that connector so you can even begin building this use case. Additionally, we'll have other use case guides on building other uh, Creator Studio use cases. So it's a really good resource for ideation. And then in general, the, 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 the developer documentation is uh, you know, your primary resource for all things move work skill and what you can do or what you can't do in Creator Studio. Lastly is our developer community. This is a forum that you all have access to. Um, and it's uh, I, I would I would just ask that you take uh, ownership of, of this forum. Uh, what, what I mean by that is you can go there to ask really any kind of question um, that uh, you might be able to have answered by the audience of the forum, which is other customers like yourself, as well as uh, product managers, product owners at MoveWorks, engineers, uh, people like myself who, who are on that portal and, and, and ready to help answer any of your questions as they come up. So then uh, for those who are remaining on the call, just know that I will be uh, shooting to post something on community as a follow-up for this, uh, this session. If you have any other questions or uh, ideas that come to you maybe that you want to discuss, you know, feel free to seek out that post on our Creator Studio portion of the community. Um, we can follow up with, with questions and answers there as well. Um, but yeah, I guess that's what we'll, we're, we're, we'll leave it today. Uh, thank you everybody for joining and I will uh, wish you all a good week and we'll catch you next week. Have a good one.